Hi, and welcome to another Medical Director Minute. My name is Dr. Brian Everett, and today we're going to talk about heat stroke and some creative ways we can manage it in the pre-hospital setting. So when we're evaluating a patient for heat stroke, we need to look for two things. First, have they had a heat exposure? And second, do they have an altered mental status? Now, when we're talking about altered mental status, we're looking for some symptoms. These include confusion, seizures, inability to walk or ataxia, or coma. What heat stroke is not is some of their traditional symptoms. We don't care if the patient is sweating. There's not a specific temperature that we can measure. In fact, measuring a core temperature in the pre-hospital setting is often difficult. We also don't care if they have hot or dry skin. All we care about is whether or not they've had a heat exposure and if they're altered. It's important to remember that these symptoms are not specific to adults. Children, pets can also have altered mental status after a heat exposure and require the same treatment. We need to know how to treat heat stroke effectively. It can lead to death. The body will shut down because the proteins in the body can't work. We will see evidence of end organ damage. Their brain will shut down and they'll be altered or seized. They will develop heart, liver, and kidney failure. They will have severe muscle breakdown. And because their proteins can't work, their clotting cascade can't function, and they will start to bleed, including bleeding in the head. Unfortunately, we have seen the effects of heat stroke in a mass casualty incident. More than 50 patients died after being left in a trailer in the blistering heat in Texas. The patients that did survive needed rapid cooling, and we need to be ready to rapidly cool multiple patients that have been exposed to heat. We need a process that is effective, cheap, and easy to do. One of the best ways to cool patients is through something called immersive cooling. Immersive cooling means getting the patient covered with cold or cool water so that we can use conduction and convection to lower the patient's body temperature. So what does the research say the most effective way to cool a heat stroke patient? They found that water immersion in cold water effectively lowered the body temperature much faster than passive cooling. This allows us to stop further injury to the patient and prevent morbidity and mortality. One of the best ways we can do immersive cooling in the pre-hospital setting is to use a body bag. We put the patient in the body bag, not zipping it all the way up, of course, protecting the airway, and then we take the igloo cooler off the fire truck. We dump the ice cold water onto the patient, and if we need more water to cover them by at least an inch, we can get more off the fire truck. As long as the patient's airway is maintained, we can monitor the patient and continue to provide care. I usually still pack the groin and axilla with cold packs and usually start cold fluids as well. So here's an example of a patient that arrived to the emergency department in a heat stroke. The patient's core temperature was 105 and he was altered and combative. With his airway protected and his head slightly elevated, we are able to lower his temperature in 45 minutes to 101. If you can check a core temperature, I recommend doing so and checking again in 20 minutes. Our goal is to get the patient to 101. Generally, I recommend that we cool the patient for only 45 minutes in the pre-hospital setting. If the patient regains consciousness and returns back to baseline, or they begin to shiver, we should stop cooling. Simply cut the corner of the body bag and allow it to drain. Patients can be easily transported and transferred in this method. Also, consider other causes that may have led to the patient having heat stroke. Be sure to evaluate for other causes of altered mental status. Look for evidence of drug or alcohol use. Evaluate for a stroke. Evaluate for sepsis. Evaluate for hypoglycemia. And evaluate for a possible heart attack. So when it comes to heat stroke, the important parts are to make sure we recognize it early. Look for patients with altered mental status that have been exposed to heat. We need to cool them down quickly by using immersive cooling. This will mean we will save lives and prevent further damage to the body. Thank you all for listening today. Like, share, and subscribe to learn more about pre-hospital care. And be safe out there, but have fun.